how to use the solubility table. First, print out the solubility table, which you can find on Moodle, either on the Chapter 14 topic or in the Resources, Lists, and Tables file under General Resources. If you do not have the table available, stop this video and restart it after you do. Now that you have the table in front of you, note the structure of the table. There are four columns. The first one is labeled negative ion and lists negative ions that are important in solubility problems. The second column is labeled plus and shows a bunch of pluses, which we will discuss later. The third column is labeled positive ion and lists positive ions that have important solubility relationships. The fourth column is labeled form a compound which is and lists either soluble or not soluble. Also note that in the first row it gives a definition of what this table means by soluble. That is, a compound is soluble if its solubility is greater than 0.1 molar and not soluble if its solubility is less than 0.1 molar. This sounds like a rather arbitrary division and it is in one sense but not in another sense. There is usually a very wide gap between those substances that are soluble and those that are not, with soluble substances nearly always having solubilities greater than one molar and not soluble substances having solubilities much less than 0.01 molar. So the choice of 0.1 molar is within this gap and makes sense. Now let's take a look at the rows. The first row has any negative ion in the first column, a single plus in the second, alkali metal ions, and a list of what those ions are, in the third column, and soluble, with the definition of soluble, in the fourth column. This means that any common compound of any of the listed alkali metal ions is soluble. The second row is similar, but with ammonium ions. And the third and fourth rows have a specific negative ion listed with any positive ion in the third column. These last two mean, for example, that any compound of nitrate ion is soluble. Now we get to the interesting ones. Row 5 has three ions in the first column and two different results in column four. How does this work? First of all, all three negative ions are considered together. The pluses go with the particular line in the positive ions column and the result on that line. This means that chloride or bromide or iodide ion combining with Ag plus Pb2+, plus, Hg2+, plus, or Cu+, plus, makes a compound that is not soluble, while chloride or bromide or iodide ion, combining with any other positive ion, forms a compound that is soluble. It might be a little easier to see with row 7, where there is only one negative ion listed, sulfide, S2-. Clearly, each of the three lines in the rest of the row refers to the sulfide ion, with those ions in the first two lines forming soluble compounds and any other positive ion forming compounds that are not soluble. So, how do we use the table? Suppose we wanted to determine whether the compound calcium carbonate is soluble. The first thing we need to do is find out what the ions are in the compound. We go to the table of ions and find that calcium ion is Ca2+, and carbonate ion is CO3-. Now we need to find those two ions in one of the rows in the table. It is easier to start by finding the negative ion because the positive ions appear many times in that column. We find carbonate 
in row 9. Where is the calcium ion? The first line says alkali metal ions or ammonium ion. Remember that the alkali metal ions are listed in the first row and Ca2 plus is not listed there so that means calcium is one of the any other positive ions. So calcium carbonate is not soluble.